morning everyone it is monday it is time for the weekly planner now we have this quite um detailed picture this week and it's from world of flowers and it's obviously been shrunk to fit onto the um, planner page because the planners are smaller than the main books so there's quite a lot of little details in here to do but anyway i thought we would uh, make a start i'm not sure whether how much of it i'm going to do but i just thought i'd get going and uh, and show you a few things I'm actually going to start with the um, branch on this side. Um, I shall zoom in a little and uh, get going. Now I'm using my, um, I don't know if this will be very blurred, it's okay. Um, these are Arteza pencils that come in the tub. Now there are several sets of these um, that were on the market, which means that if you're using them, you may not have exactly the same colours as me. You may want to colour along using your Arteza Expert. Some of the colours are the same as those. But um, otherwise, um, just use um, anything really. I'm starting by sharpening because we do need quite sharp for these uh, branches and things. And I'm using quite a pale brown. This is called Camel Brown. You can see it's quite a yellowy brown. And uh, I'm just going to start by putting a layer of this over all of the branches. And then uh, we'll do a little more. I am quite zoomed out today because these branches take up a lot of space and I'm going to be doing all of them. So I don't want to have to keep moving the book and forgetting and um, leaving you out of shot. But I can tell you that it's just a basic layer. There's nothing um, too complex going on. I'm just concentrating with that little detail there. So I hope everyone's um, doing well. I don't wonder if you're keeping up with the planner or not. You may not have the planner, of course. You may um, be doing this picture from World of Flowers or uh, just watching. But uh, it's interesting. I know some people make a start on their planner and then it gets a little bit, they get a little bit behind. But that's okay. You know, it happens to all of us. I... Uh, the fact that I make a video means that I can't get behind, so that helps me. But obviously, um, not everyone has that motivation. I also um, only work part time. I've just been working before making this video. Actually, I'm having a nice little break. I actually had some fun. Um, I say fun. Some people don't think it's fun. Um, finance articles that I'm writing. Finance is an uh, area that I do a lot of writing in. I've worked in finance actually. Um, I've worked for a building society and an insurance company in the past. Building society, for those who aren't um, from the UK, they might not know, it's a bit like a bank. Um, effectively, um, they were set up to, um, to give mortgages. Banks in the UK didn't provide mortgages and uh, building societies did. But these days, there's pretty much the same as a bank. Um, in the services they provide for customers, although the one the way they're run is a little bit different. But um, this is a bit fiddly, really thin up here, and it's quite far away from my hand. I'm struggling to see. But anyway, I'll do the best I can. So yes, so writing about finance for me is quite fun. I also keep up with the latest finance news and things like that with regards to personal finance because it affects all of us. You know, so, um, but it helps me have topics to write about because I sort of keep up with what's going on. Now, this branch actually, I'm looking, it's here as well. So I'm just going to colour it in here and down here. Now, you might want prefer to do this bit in a green or here look, because, um, you know, it sort of matches in with the flowers and that's absolutely fine. Of course, um, do it the colour that you want to. I mean, now you've got, if you've got a base of brown down, you can always put green on top now and uh, make it sort of greeny brown. But what I'm going to do is I want to just add another colour into this um, along the edges. I'm just trying to pick the right colour. I think I'm going to use this one. This is called... Um, dark chocolate brown but it's a really dark brown as you can see so that basically just pick a dark brown sharpen it may, we may need to sharpen a few times here what I'll, the aim is to go right along the edge of the branch and then just bring a lighter amount of that color in towards the middle so that we can define the edges 
make the branch look a little bit more rounded, a bit more interesting as well. And um, um, just start to make it look a bit more tree-like. Because obviously that really light colour isn't, um, isn't um, what you would expect to see on a branch. But that's okay. You know, that was just my base. Now if you're um, heavy-handed with your colouring, you may find it hard to layer colours on top of each other. Try and go a little bit more lightly. I know it's easy to say and not easy to do. Um, a tip would be just, you know, practice. Um, just imagine you're just gently um, caressing the paper with your pencil. So you um, only put down the minimum. I'm not doing that now because I'm trying to get quite a good layer of brown down. But I mean sort of for the initial layer. And um, sort of for practice... Um, building up layers can um, take time, obviously, and not all of us have the patience to always do that. I don't always. Sometimes I just want a really, um, I don't like this, it's hurting my hand. Uh, I don't always um, like to um, um, spend ages layering and I'll just push down a big deep colour. And if I'm really in the mood for a depth of colour without much effort, I'll just use a pen. And why not? I had I had to use a pen, um, quite pens for a little while recently because I actually hurt my hand, um, which wasn't good. I am um, well. I fell up the stairs, which I often do, and came crashing down onto my hand. And um, luckily, I wasn't carrying anything, and um, like a cup of tea or a phone or anything. But um, it made my wrist ache a little bit, so I knew that I needed to take it easy a bit. Actually, my sister said to me, "Look." you know, don't colour so much. I was like, you what? <laughs> don't colour so much. <laughs> but um, she said, maybe use a pen because it won't um, put so much pressure on your hands. And she was right. So I spent a couple of days, um, mainly, not all the time. I got a bit annoyed and had to go for a pencil for a bit. But just colouring in pens so that I could give my hand a rest. And uh, it worked in the sense, I mean, I don't know whether it, made a significant difference but my hand um, got better really quickly within a day or two so it's brilliant and uh, so if you um, struggle like that then that's a good way to get some colour down and I have seen um, I think it's yes in a book by Jennifer Zimmerman um, a colouring book um, tips like a it's not a colouring book it's a guide to colouring which I've got she um secrets of colouring too it's called I'll pop a link in the description if I remember. Hang on, I'll just write that down. And then I can um, put the link in for you to look at. I've got, actually, I'll put a link into my flip through and then you'll be able to see what the book's like, um, which is better um, for you because you can watch my video, see what it's like and think about whether it's a good book for you. And what she does is for some of her um, colouring, not all of it, she uses a marker first as a base and then colours pencils on top. Now, for me, that was quite novel. I was like, well, you don't do that. That's that's a bit strange. But actually, um, I'm going to pull this down because I'm finding it hard to reach. And uh, I might zoom in a bit for you. There we go. And um, she... Um, so she was doing, it was a chocolate rabbit she was colouring and she did a base of chocolate brown, I think it was Copic marker, which I wouldn't use because it's an alcohol marker and it goes bleeds through the page. It's okay if you're using a single-sided book with plenty of protection behind the page. But, um, and then she coloured pencils over the top and she did lighter pencils, like white pencil and stuff to uh, get some highlights and it was a really interesting idea which uh, I don't use very much, but it's just not something I've tried. And my white pencils are rubbish. They don't really show up very well anyway. But um, I, um, where am I going? Up here. These bits are so thin that you won't really be able to do a bit of brown each side. You might just have to fill it with brown. Even if I sharpen my pencil, I don't think it would make a big difference. I missed that bit with the lighter colour, never mind. Um, anyway, so that was an interesting technique. And if you struggle with um, putting down a dark layer, 
I know we were talking earlier about making it lighter if you're heavy handed, but obviously some people the opposite where they um they are light a bit light and they'd like to have more vibrancy in their colouring, then that is a way. Also some pencils are easier to um put down a heavy layer. Polychromos, for example, you have to layer a lot to get a vibrant colour. Um the idea is that you layer them, that's how they're designed. But um if you're using something like um, Prismacolor, for example, they're um, very vibrant, so you can um, you can um, get a good vibrant layer of colour without lots of pressure. They're also soft, which makes it easier to get colour out of them, if that makes sense. Um, some colour pencils are quite hard, so it's, it's worth um, having a having a look at the reviews of the pencils and thinking about what your needs are really right we're nearly there with the tree there we go there he is all around you can see he's a little bit lighter in the middle that's what i wanted to achieve so uh, that's what i have done and uh, we'll have a think about what we're going to do next oh excuse me sorry i had to just quickly wipe my nose lovely Right, let's put those browns aside. Um, now we've got these lovely little bell, um, dangling bell flowers, which I think are really pretty. And uh, I think I'm going to do them in this colour. Now I'm only going to use one colour for these because it's quite small. Um, I'm going to use the ultramarine blue because it's just it's pretty. And what I'm going to do is just fill a really solid bit in these um, circular parts. Can you see? Are you all in shot? Yeah, good like that oh, we haven't got one on there okay and then I'm gonna start off quite a bit darker here with a few more layers and just lighten up towards the base of the flower it's not wanting to play I think that's about right so a few more layers up here and a few less as we go down I'm going to um, move to the other side in a minute because this um, coil is out in my hand. Now we've got a lot going on in this picture with different leaves and flowers and things. And what I'm going to do is for the greens on this page, I'm just going to use a limited palette of two um, or three maybe greens. I'm just looking at what we've got. I think I'm going to use this forest green Oops, for the darker greens. And this emerald green for the lighter greens, I may incorporate a little bit of mint green. You can see they're all slightly bluey greens. And I think if I just use the three, then it will tie everything together. I've seen um, Johanna Basford um, gives this tip and I think it works really well. So I pinched it off her, so I can't claim it's mine. But uh, So I'm just going to use the um, emerald green, which is the mid one, to do these teeny leaves here. But what we're going to do is move on to something a little more significant, shall we say. Now, I'm going to just show you um, some ideas for the different flowers, because we've got different flower types. So firstly, we've got these little teeny ones here. What I'm going to do with these is keep it quite simple. I'm going to go for a pretty pink for these. Um, again, they're really small, so I'm not going to um, do too much. So the peony pink. And I'm going to use that for the petals. I'm going to do that one because then I can avoid putting my hand on the... Um, can you see? Yeah. I can avoid putting my hand on the coil, which is hurting, whatever it's called, the spine of the book where it's bound. So I'm really just filling this in. I'm not doing any shading because it's such a small area. So that's the peony pink. And then I'm going to do the centre in just a darker pink. So I'm just grabbing one. I don't know what it is yet. I'm just sharpening it. And it is the... Oh, it's the magenta. Okay, and I'm going to do that in the middle. Like that. There we go. And what I'm going to do to finish these off, to make them look a little cuter, is to use a... Not that one. This one. A jelly roll. The number five is the really thin nib and just go put some white dots around the middle I just think it looks you can't really see I 
just think it looks cute. I don't know. Yeah, I just think it's fun. So there we go, just a few dots. They have sort of faded a bit. Hang on. Mm, they've gone pink. So obviously the yellow, the pink pencil in this set um, takes on the pigment, unfortunately. I'll just put a bit more there and hope that it fades it down a bit. Okay, so that's that flower. Um, so all the, there are lots of little ones like this. So these up here, oops, sorry, you can't see those three there. These four here, um, I think, oh yeah, and look, these as well. I shall do them all the same and um, this one and this one and this one. Okay, not the big ones, but the smaller ones, all with that combo. Now with the slightly larger ones here, I'll just show you quickly. With the peony pink, I can put a bit more colour in the centre and less towards the end of the petal, which I think I'll do, just to uh, give a bit of interest and shape to those petals. Okay, but it's still nothing too fancy. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do those. Um, these, I always do these blue, and I'm not going to because we've got blue here, so I'm going to do them in a sort of purpley colour. What have we got? Oh, we've got this colour. This is a sort of purpley pinky colour. I'll just show you. Look at that. And it is called Lilac. So I'll just give it a sharpen. And we'll do it in lilac. I'll show you and you can decide what you think. I feel that was a little bit blurred. I'm just going to zoom out. I don't know why everything seems blurred to me. Some days I just cannot seem to get my camera to focus. And I don't know why. So with these, they've got little dots around them. Yeah. And we're going to do those dots, but not in white um, or black. Johanna's done them in black. We're going to go over them in a bit of pen. I'll show you in a minute. So we just colour them in. It's a really quick, quick, quick job. But we're going to grab a pen. I'm trying to find it. Um, yeah, this is a Stedler um, fine liner. It has got, I think it's got a tiny number at the bottom. It says F8 down there. I don't know if that's of any help to anyone. But for me, this is the sort of magenta colour. And I'm going to just dot all around here just to add some sort of pollen -y, magical prettiness like that. Okay, it's just an idea. You don't have to do it. It's up to you. Okay, we've got these big flowers. Now these are based on real flowers and I know someone will know what they're called, but I don't. They look like a type of chrysanthemum to me, to be honest. And uh, we shall do these next. Um, I'm having a little think about what I'm going to do. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a blue and a pink and we are going to mix them together. Let's have a go, see what happens. So we've got the peacock blue and the plum purple. It says purple, but that's pink in my head. But we'll start with the purple. We're not going to worry about these overturned bits yet. and Leave those alone. Now, I don't want to take this all the way along, so I'm putting a lot here and then fading here to there and a tad there, okay? And then we'll get the peacock blue and we'll start with our heavier layer here. That's quite heavy, isn't it? And then fade it down through here like that then we'll go back to the pink and we'll just keep layering them up a little bit until they mix together and I'm hoping they won't go too muddy sometimes purples which is what we're achieving can look a bit muddy but I think I can pull this off there we go I'm all right with that I'm happy with that it's quite it looks quite luminous but apart from that that's fine so that's what I'm going to do on all of those and this one and this one okay and the turned over bits I want to be a pale um, pink 
So I'm using this plum purple, but I'm going to really gently apply it because I want it to look the same colour family, which it is, but I don't want it to really stand out so like that. Okay, and we've gone for the pink because we've got quite a lot of blue here. So that those are going to the centre we'll do in a different way. Well, maybe we'll take a purple. Yeah, let's do purple. So we've got the eggplant purple, which is a sort of quite a reddish purple, I think. And we'll go all the way around here. We're going to sort of ignore the fact that they're a separate little circle, circular seeds. We're just going to colour them all the same because they're small. And then fade that in. So I've got a heavy layer on the outside. I'm just going to go over a little bit more. And then less as we go in, like that. And then we'll get a lighter shade. We have got the um, amethyst purple, which is very pretty. And we'll go over the outside completely. And then bring that in at a lighter, quite lightly in the middle. You can leave some paper showing through if you want to. Going to try and just make that second row of seeds a bit darker, but very little in the middle, like that. And I'm going to do that the same on all of them. So that's that. That's our that one. I'm just clumping up my pencil so I know where I am and what I'm up to. So those I've used. Right. Um, Sorry, I'm just organising my pencils. Right, so we have these um, larger flowers. Now, I'm not going to do any oranges or reds. We've got all pinks and purples. I'm going to stick to pink, purple and green on this particular page. So these two, um, these flowers, I'm thinking purples. Now, we've used some purples here, but I think we can use, use them again here. So I'm going to use, but I'm going to use the amethyst. I'm not going to go for the really dark eggplant. It's quite reddish as well. So we'll go for the amethyst and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So it'll be this one and this one and that one up there. Okay, actually, I'm going to show you on that one because this one's slightly more complex because it's got petals behind, whereas the other two haven't. So you do the other two as if you were just doing the centre bit. Oh, I've got pins and needles in my foot. Oh, so put the harder layer of amethyst here and start to fade it quite quickly on these petals that are near the center like that try and make it even which i didn't there we are but on these ones at the back I want it a little bit heavier because it's going to be shadow here and here from the petals either side and then fade that towards the tip now with the back petals we're not going to add another color but with this one we are, and we have got the um, lavender, and we're going to put the lavender on the tip. I'm just going to give it a sharpen, it's quite, they're all very blunt. So I'm going to put the lavender on the tip here, and it will just help to blend it all up as well, like that. We could put a bit here as well, not too much, because I want that one to be darker. I'm just going to pick up the um, amethyst purple again and just darken that a bit more. There we go. So we're going to do that around the whole flower. We do have a centre. This one's got dots and the other two haven't. What I'm going to do with the centre is I'm simply going to colour them black. Okay, I've got the noir, the black. And then I'm going to put some white dots on the centre. I'll show you on this one. Um, we can use our Jelly Roll 05 again. And basically I'm just going to make a pattern of dots around. You may have to, I have to move it a little bit, rotate it a bit to get the ink to come out. But somehow, I'm just going to scribble it on my book. 
I want to do lots okay and that's what I'll do on the other ones as well even though they don't have the sort of seeds marked on them we can still dot it like that okay now we do have these round ones here um i'm having a look i think we'll do them blue because we've only got we've got loads of blue i'm just looking at where they appear elsewhere yeah we'll do them blue i think they look like little fluff balls don't they no ever so cute we will use the um mykonos blue and what i'm going to do is color in a very circular motion because i want them to look a little bit fluffy i don't know whether it will show up or not but i don't want to color any area darker than the rest i just want them to look fluffy there we go and so all of those little ones will look like that now um, where else have we got? Got lots of leaves. Um, now I slightly vary the way I do the leaves, I think. Like, for example, on this particular one that we're on here, I will probably do all of these leaves the same way. And I'll probably just use all three greens, actually, going from dark to mid to light. But then when we've got the grass, I probably just use one colour and uh maybe the lightest one um it's not really grass but i'm sure you know what i mean okay um the only thing that i'm seeing that we've got left that we haven't um really tackled is the butterflies ah the butterflies i should say they're down here look so i'll have a look at those um trying to think I don't I think I'd like them to be a slightly different colour so they stand out and I'm thinking I could do them brown so they match the branch but I don't think that's going to really work. We could do them like orange or red or yellow so they're a completely different colour but I think that will just look odd. So what I'm thinking is will it work? Yes. Is to go for the darkest blue which is the denim to start with and to fill in some of the butterfly with the denim so here I'm going to do a darker layer near the body and go lighter towards the edge of the wing it's how I always color butterflies like that and I'll show you on this one I'm going to just fill in these gaps like this And then the body, I will do in the grey. I'm going to use the darkest grey. I think it shows up better, especially as we've got such a small space for the body. So this is the um, charcoal grey. This is the dark. We've only got two greys. I've only got two greys. So around the head in a circular motion, leaving a little white bit in the middle if you can. And the same as the body. So just work around the body and try and leave a little bit in the middle it just gives it a bit of a shine like that and the rest of the butterfly the wing parts that we've missed i'm going to do it in black so this is the noir which is the black and around the wing here in a really dark layer so lots of color going down like that and the same on this one all the bits we've missed like that this could probably do with a sharpen now uh, do quite a good burnish layer and around there I should have filled in that blue in the middle but you'll know what to do okay and for the butterfly I will do some white dots as well so I've got the same old um, white pen and um, I think so it's nice to have a big one and then a few smaller ones like that and here we haven't got so much space just a few dots around I just think the dots make a difference to the butterfly if that's not quite dark enough um, 
doesn't show up enough you can use slightly thicker gel pen or add another I might add another layer of white in a bit um, the black tends to absorb the white a little bit but up here where I did a few layers it does stand out so I might just go over those dots again but I've got to finish the butterfly of course um, I may just show you a leaf before we um, go although it's been half an hour which is a long time for a video really but I wanted to sort of do all of this page in one because I think probably if you're like me, you like to finish the, the page um, in a one-er. So I'll just show you a leaf and then we'll finish. So this is the um, forest green. It doesn't want to show you its name. And basically um, hard layer here. So lots of layers. It looks nice next to the purple, I think. Like that. I love that amethyst purple though, it's very, very pretty. And start to fade, like that. Then grab the um, emerald green and go over here where we started to fade, overlap that. And then just take the colour further up the leaf. It's nice and simple. And then lastly, with our mint, I just need to sharpen it. You can see the colours are all quite different, but I think it, they work together well. This is the mint green, and I will do the tip. And then colour down. So I want lots on the tip, and then I'm just going to bring that colour down and merge it together. with those colours we've got already. There we go. I rather like that. It's gone all blurred. Maybe it's my eyes. I don't know. So all of the um, bigger leaves will be done in that same way and that will help using all three colours in one leaf. Then when we do these, which might only be one colour, probably will, those dots, hmm, I'll probably do them the same colour as these bowls just because they're round there's no good reason for it really so I'm going to work on that and finish it and I will show you a picture of this sort of complete page and you can decide what you like I have to say I'm really loving this but uh, so uh, see what you think and uh, and that's that so I will um, I will as I say finish it and share a finished picture what I might do is use a little bit of pastel to do a background um, probably will. I'll probably find a really pale pink, I'm guessing, to do the background, but I, until I've finished it, I won't know. There might be a bit too much pink. It might need some purple or blue, but I will use a pale colour and just do a background. And I'll probably won't, I might try just doing it inside the, um, inside the circular area where the, um, sort of branch is. So, just might try just doing it in that bit but if it doesn't work I might go all the way out or I might do a different colour on the outside to the inside but I will it's hard to I can't imagine what it's going to look like you know I can't do that so I've got to finish colouring it first and then make that decision but I yeah I um, will be using my soft pastels and you'll be able to just have a look and see what whether you um whether you think it needs something or whether you're happy with it just being left so that's me. I'm going to go off and finish this, which will be fun, while I'm trying to plan my next um, piece of freelance writing finance article. And, uh, and I will, hopefully you um, will have a go as well and decide what you're going to do with this page. And I look forward to seeing some of them on the colouring groups and on Instagram and things like that. But do have a lovely day. Um, I hope you have fun um, and that you do get time to do a little, at least a little bit of colouring. Thank you so much for watching. And happy colouring.